Carolina Castorena, and this is Visions of Inspiration. Welcome to the show. I have someone here all the way from Kenya, Africa, a father. And he is here, and he's so awesome. Uh, I'd like to introduce Father Joseph Kahumbu. Kahumburu. <laughs> what a to meet pleasure, you. Father. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> uh, Kahumburu means a little mountain. Uh huh. And uh, the background is that, according to our African culture, sometimes people get names according to the background in which they are born. Ah. And if maybe one of my great-grandfathers must have been born close by the little mountains. And hence, I got the name through that kind of process. Ah. Yeah. Father, how was it for you growing up in Ken Ken Kenya? Uh, yeah, in Kenya. Africa. Yeah. Well, I grew very much in the countryside. Which, which means, what difference is it from somewhere else? There? Yeah, in the countryside, we basically people are farmers, uh, peasant and farmers growing vegetables and all oh. kinds of things. Uh -huh. I grew very much in that kind of culture uh, as contrasted to the countryside, to the, to the, to the towns where, you know, life is different. Okay. So now, when you're growing up, um, did you have electricity? No. Did well, you have cars? Yes, when I grew up, there, we didn't have electricity. But uh, now, after many years, uh, they have been doing what we call rural electrification. Uh -huh. But I, I can assure you that even today, in some of the places where even the very village where I come from, mm -hmm. we don't have electricity. People oh. have been waiting for a long time, but they, there is hope that uh, something is, is going to have to take place and people will have electricity in their homes, and uh, okay. that's a good help for, for them. We take for granted so many things here in the United States. Right. Um, now, you shared a story about uh, your mom having to go to mass, <laughs> yeah. walking. Right. How many miles and how long did it take her to get there? Yes, as long as I have been, a, I have known my mother, and especially when, when, when we were, I was able to go out to accompany her to mass. We used to walk, she used, and even, even today, she walks about 12 miles oh. back and forth. So six miles one way and six miles the other way. Wow. So it is, people do not have cars as such. There are few people with cars, but majority of the people, are poor people, they, mm -hmm. they just walk to the church. Wow. And uh, the distance was enormous. Uh, but now in recent years, because of the expansion of the church, they have built a church close by my home. Oh. And that is very rewarding for my mother because she can walk uh, fewer, fewer miles, you know. Yeah. Now, you distance. said 12 miles, so that would have been, what, an hour, an hour and a half? Well, yeah, it would take you practically an hour to the place where the mass is being celebrated, to the church, uh -huh. and another hour back. Wow. But anyway, everybody does these things with a lot of joy, uh -huh. uh, without complaining. <laughs> it's like my mother, this, this, is, this didn't, didn't mean, you don't even have to think about it. Uh. So it has to be done, it is a nice thing, and because of that kind of determination, life is normal for her, there's nothing, she, she is not to be pitied because she's, she's, she's walking all that, all that distance. Yeah. yeah. You know, I, um, I was going to, I, I live in the harbor, I was going to mass in, in, um, in Brea. Yeah. And I'm driving down the street because they, they closed the, the, the 12, 12 o'clock mass and it was right near where I worked in, in Anaheim. Right. And I'm driving down and I'm complaining. Yeah, <laughs> I, because of traffic. Because of traffic <laughs> and what am I doing all the way down yeah. there and I don't want to go this far. And I heard somebody say, yeah. you're complaining when people walk <laughs> hours to mass and you're exactly. complaining and you're in the car. Exactly. And I thought, okay. Yeah. 
<laughs> there are people who are there are people who are who are facing very who are going doing things in a very difficult way. We should be able to appreciate what we have: the facilities, good roads, water, electricity. We don't have all these things, so we have to do things the hard way. Yeah. However, people have a lot of determination. There is nothing that is going to stop them from pursuing those aims and those those things they have to wow. do. They still believe strongly this has got to be done. Hmm. Above all, I, I remember my mother is a very strong woman in terms of her faith. Mm -hmm. Mass means everything for her. Oh. So if people, visitors are suggesting that they would like to come home on a Sunday, they had better change their mind because she's not going to accommodate them <laughs> on a Sunday. <laughs> she tells them clearly, uh, if you want to come and visit us, pay us a visit, just come on a different day. Oh. Because the day of the Lord is very special for her. Wow. And we grew to learn that from her, all of us, nine children, because I come from a big family of nine, nine, nine children. Oh yeah. my goodness. Are you the oldest, the youngest? Yeah, I am the firstborn in the family. Oh, that's yeah. the oldest. I'm the, I'm, I'm the, I'm the oldest. Oh, yeah. okay. Yeah. Why, why did you become a priest? Well, I have come to understand probably only afterwards why, what I was really running into. Mm -hmm. But um, my desire to become a priest was motivated by some missionary priests mm -hmm. who came to preach to us in Kenya. Uh -huh. Uh, many years back, and uh, I would say that I admired what they did. Mm -hmm. Above all, they came to celebrate Mass in our place, in our, in our churches. Uh -huh. But I also found them very much interested about the life of the people. So whatever people have to do, uh, for them evangelization meant not just preaching the Word of God, mm -hmm. but initiating projects that ah. would make people enjoy life and live a little bit more comfortable. So when I look at this holistic attitude towards mm -hmm. ministry, I wanted to become like them. I wanted to do exactly what they did. And uh, that's where my desire came uh, to become a priest. Yeah, uh, yeah. Are you sure it was in your mother praying for you? Uh, pardon? <laughs> I, want her, I want him to be a priest. <laughs> you know how powerful pr prayer is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So you wonder whether I'm... I, I no, I'm saying that maybe it was your mother that kept praying for you to be a oh, priest. My mother, my mother <laughs> prayed for me a lot, but he was also very realistic because the day when I said that I want to go to the seminary, uh -huh. she cautioned me, telling me that uh, in the seminary... We need people who are serious. So oh. if you are not really prepared, as much as you feel the desire, mm -hmm. you have to decide whether you really want to go to the seminary. But I was, it was not very easy to decide around that time because I was a young kid. I was, a, I was maybe 14, 15 years. That's, how old were you when you decided you wanted to be a priest? Uh, maybe about 14, 15 years. Really? I decided I wanted to become a priest, and I went oh. to the junior seminary. Oh, my goodness. But it is through years that I was able to discover that God is calling me because the road and to priesthood is a long journey. Mm -hmm. So if you are really called, you will go through. If you are not called, you'll be able to decide in between whether you, you have to continue or not. Father, how, how, do, how do they determine if you have a, the calling? If you have the calling? Uh -huh. um, when you go to the major seminary, Mm -hmm. That is the time you are exposed to a lot of sta the staff members who have to teach you. Uh -huh. You have to go through the spiritual formation, the intellectual formation, and the pastoral formation, and human formation. Wow. Because all those dimensions are very important to the ministry. Mm -hmm. So as you continue with your studies, you, you will be assessed. They will see how you are responding to, this a to these areas, and they are going to more or less be able to discern what kind of a person you are in terms of what you say you want to become. So uh, somehow or rather, you will come to discover, even yourself, you uh -huh. keep on discovering that you are called to become a priest. Wow. So that's how it works. But you have the, a, whole of, a lot of people, and then you have a lot of years before you. Because the first year, you do what they call the spiritual year. Then you do another two years of philosophy. Then you do another four years of theology. That's plenty of time. Wow. 
to be able to decide whether that is exactly what you want. Now, how did you know, with no doubt in your mind, mm -hmm. that you were going to be a priest? Did you hear God calling you? Well, you some, you? somehow, we, nowadays you don't hear the voice of God like people used to hear the voice of God, mm -hmm. like when Samuel was called by God. But you hear the voice of God through the people. Uh -huh. Those people, some of them are very inspiring. They are icons. Mm -hmm. And you look at them, you look at their work. And at the, at the same time, you are reflection and meditation and prayer, mm. which you have to do when you are in the seminary. It becomes a means by which you hear the inner prompting of the voice of God telling you that I need you to come and minister in my vineyard. Oh. So that's, that's how I'm able to to understand it. And, and I, I understand what, what you're saying because mm -hmm. there's a couple of times that, that I, I heard very, you just can't describe it. Right. But I was ready to give up on, on doing the tapings, you know, the show. Yeah, I don't right, want right, to do right, it, right, you right, know, right, I'm right, scared. Right. Yeah. And it was like, like somebody said, this is what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started yes. doing it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There is always that teachable moment. And I would call it the moment of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. When you really feel strongly that this is what the Lord wants you to do. Yeah. You, you may not even be very strong. You may not be even fully equipped. Mm -hmm. But I think you believe, if you really believe that God is calling you, He will, he will guide you along the path of that, that ministry. Yeah. Another, another thing too, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, Father, yeah, did you okay. finish up? No, I was saying that... Uh, even when we are ordained and priests, mm -hmm. sometimes they ask us some questions. Do you want to be ordained? Are you ready for the ministry? The answer is always yes, with the help of God. Ah. Because it's not just you. The calling is coming from the one who calls, and whoever, whoever, the one who is calling is God. So yeah. he's guiding you through, ah. and you trust that it's going to be well. Wow. Yeah. Y you know, one day, um, I was driving down the street with my granddaughter, mm -hmm. and it was like I heard God say, okay, I want you to be a Eucharistic minister. Oh, yeah. And I said, okay. <laughs> like, like, I already knew it was him. Okay, you know. That's right. So I called. They sent me the paperwork. I filled it out. No problem. I, you know, it was just, I knew. And in there, I put that that would be my ultimate goal. Right, exactly. And, and I knew that I was going to be accepted. Uh -huh. And of course I was. Right. And and it was the most rewarding feeling I have ever had in my whole life. Oh, that's very nice. It's just it's beautiful when when someone says thank you for serving us. Says, oh, it's my honor. Exactly. Because it it it, it it's given me so much more growth spiritually. It's a privilege. It's a privilege to be able to serve there you know, yeah. as a Eucharistic minister. And, and that was. That was beautiful. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that's the way we feel for even when we serve in this ministry. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, we are not worthy. Nobody is worthy for the ministry. But because you are serving and as an instrument of God, mm -hmm. God must, be, must equip you with the necessary means to be able to transform the people around you. Because our ministry is one of transforming, trying to transform the people from within Mm -hmm. so that they can have a better life, so that they can uh, understand their mission and calling in life. Wow. That's the ministry that uh, you know, we realize we have, we have been called into. Wow. Now, you've been a priest for 22 years. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's a long time. <laughs> right, right, right. What, what degrees have you gotten, or, or what is it that you, you've done in those 22 years? Well... Within those 22 years, after, immediately after my ordination, I worked and taught in the, in the junior seminary mm -hmm. where I was admitted as a young seminarian. Oh. I taught for four years. And upon that, after completing four years, the bishop decided to, take me, to send me to, for further studies in Rome. Oh. And I went to Rome and I studied 1987, and I studied a very important subject in the life of the church, and that is uh, liturgy. Mm -hmm. Liturgy is all about celebrations. The, the main celebrations that we do in the church is very important to learn about that. So I was prepared for that. Mm -hmm. And uh, immediately I did my licentiate. 
I came back to Kenya in 1990 uh -huh. to begin teaching, not in the junior seminary now, but in a, in a major seminary. Oh. Because in my diocese in Kenya, they had already opened a new, diocese, a new, a new seminary. Oh. Because we have got so many young men who want to become priests. So the bishops are expanding, the seminarians, seminaries mm -hmm. are coming up. I was needed there to teach. So mm -hmm. upon completion my licentiate, which is like equivalent of the master's degree, mm -hmm. I went to teach in the seminary. Father, why do you, I mean, this just came to my mind. It seems like there's quite a few people that want to be priests over there. Mm -hmm. Why is it different from over there to over here? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> they're yeah. more humbling. They yeah. experience more things. They they have more the, you know. I mean, what is it? Yeah, I, I think there are so many factors. <laughs> really, really, first and foremost, if you look at the reality of religion and faith in this country, mm -hmm. uh, you you received uh, your evangelization over two hundred years. But the people who came to preach, the missionaries who came to preach to Kenya, to my country in Africa, uh -huh. they came only a hundred years ago. Mm -hmm. So most of us are celebrating a hundred years of faith. Wow. So within that hundred years, the, we, have we have had a boom of vocations. So many young men want to become priests. But now, and of course our seminaries are full, and it is very good because when we have these seminarians, uh, the the, the, the priests priest are basically not for only a particular region, mm -hmm. but they're for the universal church. So eventually, these priests might, might be going to places where we don't have the vocations, like America, like other countries, mm -hmm. uh, because it's like a give and take. We received from the missionaries, and now we, are, we have grown. We are having our own local priests. Now it is time to give back and to send wow. some of the priests to work in those places wow. from where the, our faith eventually was nurtured. Mm -hmm. But I would like to mention, uh, according to your question, one, one thing, that uh, the present culture mm -hmm. of materialism mm -hmm. is one of the factors that have contributed to the lack of many young people who want to become priests. So people are thinking about so many other things that they want to do in life. And uh, people just want to follow other, other ways of life. Mm. And uh, we, we, we are, I also realize there's another factor. In this country, for example, America, the, numbers, the number of children that are being born in the family uh -huh. are not very many. But in Africa, the numbers are still high. Oh, so really? that if I, ca if I come from a family of nine, uh -huh. in today's, by standards of today, I think families are going like five to six children. So Unless. You, you still have somebody. You can be able to harvest a seminarian to go to the seminary there. Ah. So if you don't have a lot of children, who is going to go to the seminary and who is going to go to other careers? That's true. So I think that is one of the factors that has contributed to this situation, that in some countries the vocation has gone down and in other countries the numbers are increasing. Uh -huh. We are harvesting, but our time is coming because the more uh -huh. people experience economic growth, the more changes they experience. In those places, we realize the, the vocations are going down. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, you got to meet the Pope. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did that feel? I mean, I think that would be awesome. Yeah, it was awesome for me. Uh, while I was in Rome in 1980. 88, uh -huh. one of the bishops from Kenya came to Rome uh -huh. and uh, we asked him if we could make an appointment for us to be able to celebrate the Mass with the Holy Father, John Paul II. Uh -huh. And uh, for sure he got an appointment, but it was very, very early in the morning. <laughs> was, we had to wake up like 4 o'clock oh. to begin preparing to take the bus and to move to St. Peter's Square ah. to be able to find our way to his private chapel. Uh -huh. So we were very privileged and uh, we got to enter into this, in that chapel mm -hmm. and uh, I was given a privilege to participate and to, to be one of the main concelebrants. Oh my goodness. So that one priest was on one side and I on the other side uh -huh. and we have we the Holy Father right at the middle. Oh. So it was very exciting. Oh. And uh, of course, after the, the mass, 
then he came around greeting everybody. Uh -huh. You know, he always said, uh, <laughs> like this, he always greeted uh, you and uh -huh. asked where you come from. Mm -hmm. And he gave us a rosary. Oh. And he, he's, he's very acknowledging. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a very, very wonderful time to be, uh -huh. that I, I would never forget in my lifetime, uh -huh. you know. Did you ever get to meet Mother Teresa? I met Mother Teresa while, wh while I was in the, in, the, in the minor semin in the major seminary uh -huh. in, in Nairobi. Oh, my she goodness. came to Nairobi for one reason or another, and uh, the, st the staff members had to take the opportunity to ensure that she comes to our seminary. Why? Because we knew her story. Uh -huh. We understood what she was doing for the people. We understood that her mission is part of our mission too. Yeah. And everybody wanted to see her. Mm -hmm. And I made sure that I touched her. Aww. Just to touch her. Mm -hmm. For me was something like enough, like saying, I acknowledge the great work that she's doing. And I pray that I may be inspired to be able to continue wow. doing something for the people. Wow. Like Mother Teresa. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it's, it, it seems like you, you see something that she was doing and, and the courage and the, yeah. you know, the... the just not stopping, just keep right. on keep going. Right, keep on going, keep on Determination. Going. Yeah, exactly. The idea of determination is, is important because there are so many forces that we have to encounter in our life every day. Yeah. But as one of the philosophers said, one of the Greek philosoph philosophers said, uh -huh. we cannot change the direction of the wind, but we can adjust the sails. <laughs> so the winds of life will always be there. Uh -huh. The problems will be always be there. But we have to, uh, to adjust the sails so that we still continue on. Wow. And that kind of vision, determination is very important, not only for a priest, but for anybody. That's true. We all need to adjust ourselves so that we, we don't give up. People tend to give up, but there's no other way. If you give up, it means you have accepted defeat. But if you are still open and optimistic, it means that you are sustaining hope. Mm. That hope is something that is it's for, meant for everybody, not just for a priest or people with special ministries. Mm -hmm. But all of us have to have to sus so sustain some hope so that we can pursue what we are doing with great determination. That's true. Yeah. So you're only in Los Nietos for till the 15th of this month. Mm -hmm. Now, where do you go from there? Oh, immediately I, I live here on the 15th of August. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to New York. Oh, so you're in New York. I am in New York. How's I've, it? I've been there for the last five years. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm in a parish, uh -huh. most of the Trinity, in a small town called Mamaronek. Oh. It's a very peaceful, very, very nice, nice town. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll be going back to continue with my ministry. Uh. And uh, at the same time, I'm a student at Fordham University. So I will continue also with my, as I do my ministry, I continue doing my studies, and I'm in the last year of my PhD program before uh, I, I return, eventually return back to Kenya. Um, do you want to go back to Kenya? Yes, certainly I want to go back to Kenya because I want to identify myself with my, my people. No. I want to continue to work in their midst. I'm grateful to God because I've been able to, to serve the American church during this time. Uh -huh. But uh, uh, as they say, east or west, home is the best. Oh. <laughs> so for that reason, I have the nostalgia of going back. Uh -huh. And as soon as I accomplish what I'm doing, I'm ready to go and teach maybe in the seminary or teach in our Catholic university, uh -huh. wherever the Lord wants me because we have to be open to the to what the Spirit wants us to do. You're, you're, you're pretty much a teacher, aren't you? Yes, I have most, actually for most, 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 of, the t most of the times I've been teaching, I taught in the minor seminary, I mm -hmm. taught in the major seminary, um. and I think also as you preach the Word of God, that is part of the teaching ministry. Yes, so I'm very much tuned to that kind of career, and that is what I, I would precisely like to continue to do because uh. I, I am now used to that kind of work. Uh, Helping the people understand the word of God, the, uh, the approach to life, uh -huh. because the ministry of preaching is all about 
helping people to identify God in their lives and to be able to help them to move forward wow. while experiencing the God who is their own creator. That's beautiful. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you sing too. I do sing. I, I, Are you good? I, I'm not very good. <laughs> I don't probably my vo I don't have the best of the voices, <laughs> but I can make people sing. I, 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 I composed a complete mass that is being sung in Kenya by Aww. our people. Uh -huh. And uh, wherever there is music, I enjoy, especially when in the church and all that. Yeah. So it's one of the areas I feel that gets me very much interested. You know, one of my favorite songs is the Song of St. Francis. Yes. Make me a piece. Make me an instrument, instrument of, of your thy peace. peace. Yeah, beautiful. That's a beautiful. That is so, so pretty. It just, you know, it, it just kind of gives you that, 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 that desire and that right. peace and that love to exactly. keep on doing exactly. God's work. Exactly. Because the words in, in this, that song are very powerful. Yeah. It's like uh, every person, every human person is not in this world by any chance. But we have been called for a mission. And for that reason, that's why it reminds us that we have been called to be instruments of peace. Mm. And especially today, we, we are really much in need of peace. When we look oh, at what's yeah. going on, we sh if everyone is an instrument of peace, our world would be, would be a world with a difference. Wow. So that's, a, that's our prayer and that's our hope that we can be inspired even by such a song to think about of our own mission and what we have been called for. What's your mother's name? My, my what? Your mother's name. Oh, my mother's name is Maria. See, oh, what a beautiful name. Yeah. Do I say hi to your mother? <laughs> <laughs> hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. <laughs> hi, Maria. Hi, Mom. <laughs> I wish she could be following this program. It would be a wonderful thing to be able to will see she be able? To, will she be able if you send a CD, d yeah. uh, a DVD? Would she be able Absolute. to see it? Absolutely. Yeah. She can be able to watch something. Then we're going to have to yeah. have Yeah, my brothers and sisters will make it possible for her to watch something on the TV. Father, thank you. God bless you and God thank you, you so much. I'm so pleased to have met you and thank you for inviting me to your studio, no, Carolina. Yeah, grazie. Yeah. This is Carolina Castorena, Visions of Inspiration. God bless all of you. God bless, bless our troops. Bye bye. Ballad. Asking Jesus, telling Jesus, please don't hide your face from me. He came down from his sky, wiped the tears from your eyes. He said, Heaven to me is love in you.